Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Out of the Park Baseball 24 playthrough of the Buffalo Wings. We are in the early stages of the 2030 to 2031 offseason, and it's already been a very busy offseason for our Buffalo Wings. Uh, pulled off a major trade, traded away our former franchise shortstop Marcelo Meyer, who's recovering from a fractured elbow. And we are worried that he may be wrecked physically and perhaps not quite the player that he used to be after this second major injury to his left elbow in about two and a half years. And he was making a ton of money and we needed to also cut some money from our payroll. So we traded most notably him and uh, closer Cade Smith, who is a very good player who was arbitration eligible, going to be making about seven to eight million dollars next year. Didn't think we could afford both him and Munoz and decided to go with Munoz as our closer for next year. So we traded the two of them and we brought back Dansby Swanson and we got the stars to keep a good chunk of his contract. So we are still in win now mode with these buffalo wings although we are trying to shed payroll swanson is actually an upgrade defensively at shortstop not quite as good a hitter as marcelo meyer he's been a pretty average major league bat over the course of his career but he's less injury prone better defensively and still respectable offensively and as i mentioned the uh, stars are going to keep the majority of his contract this year and next year if that vesting option kicks in. So feel like uh, using Marcelo Meyer and Cade Smith, uh, getting May Meyer's contract off the books, um, moving on from Smith, and getting them to keep a huge chunk of Dansby Swanson's contract uh, lets us remain competitive for this next season or two. Don't think we're in a position where we need to do a total rebuild. Uh, obviously, I could be proven wrong about that but that is uh not my thought about this team right now and speaking of thoughts on the team i do sincerely appreciate all of the comments in recent episodes all of the suggestions all of the constructive criticism all of the taunts of me uh, when i make a decision that you think is stupid uh, i do learn from all of those uh, pieces of feedback that i get in the comments uh, i think it makes me a better player gives me something interesting to think about and hopefully uh, going through those comments and reading the comments of others and watching these episodes and learning from what I do right and what I do wrong hopes uh, all of you play the game better and more enjoyably as well so thank you for watching and thank you for commenting and clearly the move that we made is going to be the most impactful in all probability of this upcoming offseason. It does have us in a position where we potentially have some money available. Uh, we would like to put more into scouting and player development when all is said and done. So we still have some decisions to make on arbitration eligible players. We have decided over the last uh, few days of game time to try to retain our first baseman, Takao Ota, and we've already retained our young designated hitter, Samuel Basalo. Both of those guys are very one-dimensional hitters, uh, don't bring much, if anything, to the table defensively, but they were number one and number two on our team last year in home runs, and Basalo also led the team in ribbies last year. So just felt like we could not afford to move on from those two bats. That being said, um, we do have some players on the 40-man roster who we may want to move on from. Nick York is a guy um, who kind of fits a similar profile. He's a first base slash DH slash left fielder who doesn't bring much to the table defensively and you compare him to Ota right now and we look at the seasons that they had last year Ota was a 135 WRC plus with a war of almost three York was an average major league hitter with a negative war when his defensive deficiencies were factored in 
and he's expected to only make about 600000 less than Ota this coming season. So moving on from Nick York, who's a pretty one-dimensional hitter, is something that we're thinking about. Probably going to move on from at least one of these pitchers here, Sullivan, Kim, and Talavera. And as we think about the rest of our roster, um, Tanner Shillette is another guy who fits that Basalo Ota York profile of a bat with a little bit of pop uh, that doesn't bring too much to the table defensively. Unlike York, at least he's making the major league minimum at this point. Uh, but he was not a very productive player for us last year in his first extended major league action. And I do, as I mentioned, appreciate all the thoughts and feedback about the uh, trade that brought us Swanson. I did actually look at potentially trading Meyer away for some younger players uh, when I was making the decision to ultimately go with Swanson. As I mentioned in the comments to the last episode, I, I just felt like the episode was getting real long at that point. So it kind of slipped my mind uh, to share some of those players, which obviously would have been more interesting for you as viewers. So apologies for not doing that. And I also um, probably should have, uh, as Patrick DeBonis noted, at least shopped Marcelo Meyer for a prospect package. Um, I've tended to find the prospect packages when you use that feature for players. Um, I've found the potential returns on that generally very underwhelming in the past, so I don't even tend to bother using it anymore. Um, but that's more just negligence on my part than an excuse because uh, clearly there's probably that one time in a hundred when there would be an interesting prospect package and I uh, didn't even bother doing it when uh, we traded away Meyer at this point. Um, probably wouldn't have been anything interesting but uh, I don't know that for a fact but that being said as I've talked about I am very happy to have Swanson on board think he'll be a very good defensive shortstop for us for hopefully the next couple seasons and then we'll uh, cross the bridge of figuring out who our shortstop is in 2033 uh, a couple of seasons from now and one of the things I do like about um, the comments from viewers to these episodes is that a lot of times when I'm trying to fly through play to just get an episode done and out to you and get the dopamine hit of uh, the feedback from all of you on what I'm doing right and wrong, I sometimes miss some things. And uh, Dralix pointed out that Kyron Paris may be an interesting player for us to pursue. He's got a minor league deal with the Yankees organization right now does have a captain personality, which we could need next year. He is not as good defensively as our current captain personality on the team, but he is a lot better potentially offensively than Easton Swafford, who's the guy who's currently filling that role for us. He was on the team last year only because he was the captain personality. You can see his range and his error ratings are a little bit better than Paris's. His turn double play rating is better, so he's better defensively, but his ratings offensively are clearly worse. He hit just 211 in the majors for us last year, hit 224 the year before in San Diego. Given that we are very likely to have um, one infielder who can't hit on our 26-man roster in Toshimitsu Katu, who is at least excellent defensively, I think potentially tr if we could swap Swafford for Paris, I think that would be a really good move for us because then we've got the captain personality that was the only reason we had Swafford on the roster last year. Still a versatile player defensively, although obviously he's not an optimal shortstop and not even an optimal second baseman or first baseman. Could trade him up to at least train him up to at least play third base a little bit in 
spring training uh, make him a little more versatile. But unlike Swafford, he at least has a respectable, potentially major league bat. So we are going to see what... Yeah, Swa, our assistant GM, says, I want to do this deal. The other side offers a player we have no use for. I think we definitely have a use for Paris. Um, I'm going to offer this deal. I think this would be a no-brainer for us. Um, might just mean I have no brain, but I think our assistant GM is way off. I'm going <clears> to <throat> actually probably be a little surprised if the Yankees do this. Oh. Well, We've submitted it to them. We'll hear from them. And we've also actually submitted another um, deal, I believe also to the Yankees, for a uh, left-handed pitcher. So we'll be hearing on that shortly as well, hopefully. And I'm just trying to shop some guys who are on the back end of our 40-man roster. Most of them have very little value, but Harrison Didawick, um guy who did play in one game for us at the major league level this year and drew a walk. Um, he's been a part-time player for us um, the last couple years, 27 years old. Good personality, but not a big-time prospect, not really a prospect at all. But I think by virtue of his personality, it looks like he does have some value. The Astros supposedly will offer us Franklin Heal for him, who looks like a pretty solid relief pitcher. Um, had a rough season last year with the Astros, but he's only 27, soon to be 28 years old. And over the course of his major league career, he's put up a 125 ERA plus, a 79 FIP minus, a 310 Sierra, more than a strikeout per inning. Not a horrible profile for an arm in our bullpen. We're going to have to take on a little money um, as he's arbitration eligible and probably can sign him for about $2.3 million. Um, but we've got a few spots that we want to fill in our bullpen right now, particularly with the fact that we've moved on at this point um, from Cade Smith as well as Segura, the uh, pitcher we picked up on the waiver wire early last season. So I think I'm going to try to um, see what they think about this trade. Um, so we've got a few irons in the fire. Um, I've decided I am going to make offers to Sullivan and Talavera. Uh, still going to look to ship away um, Jihoo Kim rather than pay him around a million and a half and also likely move on from Nick York rather than paying him in the low threes. Doesn't look like either of those players has much, if any, trade value right now. So we may end up just not um, not making an arbitration offer to them and letting them become free agents if uh, we can't find a trade in the next week or two before we get to the arbitration period where uh, adding one of those guys in helps us get something done. And we've heard back, and it leaks, looks like we are potentially close in all three of the different trades that we've thrown out there. Um, Swafford for Paris. Um, yeah, apparently that is not as uh, easy as it we may have hoped. Uh, they're looking for a big-time player in addition to Easton Swafford to send us Kyron Paris. Um, if we wanted to just dump salary... Moving on from the third baseman, Jace Young would be a potential option. Uh, but I may just try putting in some volume and seeing if there's anything we can do. Um, I would like to bring Paris on board. Um, I think he fits what we need for a utility infielder better than Swafford does with a better bat. But... Um, I'm not going to pay a crazy amount for a guy on a minor league contract who's 28 years old who, best case scenario, is a utility infielder. Uh, as far as Houston and Didawick for Franklin Heal, uh, we can get that deal done because they're just looking for us to throw in just about anything. Um, so I think that makes sense to get Didawick off the books. Going to have to spend a little money on Heal, but um, I think it would be worth it. 
And then the other trade um, is another one that we're not really close on, apparently. Got to put in a uh, pretty important player. Uh, but that was trading away the reliever Fernando Guanare, who I don't think is a big part of what we want to get a left-handed reliever, Luis Rodriguez, from the Yankees. Um, don't think he's a great arm out of the bullpen, uh, but we're probably going to need a lefty with the fact that we're moving on from Adrian Marejan. And I um, thought that he looked like someone whose price may not be exorbitant, but uh, right now the Yankees certainly are looking for a lot for him, in my view. And obviously with the uh, the Astros just looking for garbage in addition to um, D to Wick to get the deal for heel done. We don't even have to add in um, one of those one half star player potential guys to uh, get the done. So I think we're going to go ahead and complete that trade and get D to Wick off our books. Um, we are going to have to make an offer to Franklin Hill. I think around the... 2.3 million dollar area should be right around the magic number to get that done so we will put an offer out there to him so now it's a matter of can we get anything for kim or york in the coming days um, before we do get to the arbitration period And we've got Takao Ota signed and back on the team. Uh, the fans pleased with that. And we did um, make additional offers to the Yankees on those two players that we are looking for. Uh, we'll see whether or not there might be something we can get done or not. Um, yeah, we offered Guanare and Kim to the Yankees for Luis Rodriguez, and they are still looking for an important player or a decent prospect. Um, the one exception is Jace Young, um, but I just don't know that there's a better option for him at third base. Uh, and even here with the deal for Kyron Paris, um, I like the idea very much that Dralix brought up but even if we offer them Swafford and Tanner Shillette who is not a worthless player with that home run power um, even though he's not necessarily a great catcher we still need to add in a pretty useful player or one of the better prospects in our system to get the deal done so um not sure where we stand. Not feeling great about things right now, unfortunately. And we've added in another player to both of the deals for uh, potentially bringing on the left-handed pitcher, Luis Rodriguez, or the utility infielder, Kyron Paris, and uh, unable to make any substantive progress uh, with either of these options. So, um, I don't feel like we have to chase after either of them. I really thought that getting Kyron Paris was going to be a possibility, but thus far, um, it hasn't proven to be. And a couple more signings of arbitra arbitration eligible players, uh, the reliever Emerson Talavera and the back of the rotation pitcher Sean Sullivan, uh, both back with us for next season. Uh, so that is good news. And it does not look like we're going to be able to get anything done for Kyron Pierce, unfortunately. Uh, like the idea there, Dralix, but it seems like uh, the Yankees are putting a lot of value on him right now, unfortunately for us. But it's a long off season. There will be opportunities for us to do something at some point. 
And Franklin Heal, who we recently picked up in the trade, is signed. Um, looks like we may have a Silver Slugger winner, or we do have a Silver Slugger winner there. No Gold Glove winners this year, so Deshaun Seifu's streak of winning Gold Gloves is gone. We didn't get a note on that, but um, we did make another offer to the Yankees. And uh, they've got a real high opinion of Kyron Paris. We had offered Frank Castillo, who is a... Um, Middling prospect, a guy we picked in the fourth round in 2026, hit a decent year in double A this past year, hit 258, 24 doubles, 16 homers, but he's almost 23 years old. He's got good range in the outfield, a little bit of speed, just don't really know how much he's really going to hit. Um, we'd have to add in Lang Choi to get the deal done, who is a minor league free agent signing we made out of Taiwan. Uh, almost three years ago at this point. Um, his spot on the 26-man roster is not certain, but he still has option years, um, one option year. So it's not like we have to get rid of him. Um, but he's certainly a less valuable player than a lot of the other guys they want in this trade. And I have looked. I just don't see any decent options at third base for us next year besides Jace Young. So right now my plan is to bring him back as our starting third baseman. Um, he's pretty much a major league average kind of third baseman when all is said and done. But I think he sadly may be the best option we have next year. Um, Still going to keep trying to get something done, um, but I don't want to spend a ton to get Paris on board. Oh, and I almost forgot to check in on the Silver Slugger winners, but uh, Adley Rutschman, in his second year with us in Buffalo, had a uh, much better offensive season than his first year. Still hitting the 240s, which is disappointing. Uh, but 33 doubles, 23 home runs, walked 76 times, 126 WRC plus, 4.6 war on the year. And he is your silver slugger at catcher for the National League. And Samuel Basalo will be back with us next year for his fourth season. He is now 3-for-3, three three, uh, being the National League Silver Slugger at designated hitter uh, over the course of the three years of his major league career. And I think my persistence may have finally paid off. We look like we're going to be able to get Kyron Paris. Uh, we have to give up Castillo, the outfielder we talk about. Easton Swafford, whose role Paris is going to take, so that's fine. And they're still looking for useful major leaguers or top prospects, but one guy that they will also take is minor league reliever Nash Wagner, um, who's been in Utica for us the last couple years, did a decent job there. Not a big-time prospect, certainly a guy who could be a fifth starter or work out of the bullpen at the major league level if you needed him to. But he only throws in the low 90s, um, already 25 years old. And as we talked about, I think with the bat, and we're now also, since it's taken so long, up to very high scouting accuracy on Paris after taking the time to scout him, um, we need the captain personality, especially if we get rid of Swafford. Um, he's got a much better bat than Swafford. He's not quite as good defensively, but the bat can actually help us a little bit. You know, quite honestly, you know, if we could train Paris up at third base in spring training... He almost could be in a platoon at third base with Jace Young and then a utility infielder against right-handed pitching. But I think if we look at where Jace Young's ratings are as a left-handed hitting third baseman, yeah, I mean, honestly, Paris, if we can teach him how to play the position... His ratings are a little better offensively against left-handed pitching. 
and honestly his range is a little better than Young's. His arm is not quite as good. Neither is going to ever win a gold glove at third base. But it almost lets us at least set up a platoon at third base. Might get, be able to help us squeeze a tiny bit more production offensively out of that position. Clearly, we're going to have to play Paris a lot at third base in spring training, and who knows what he's going to look like at that position. But um, at the very least, it'll improve his defensive versatility as a utility infielder a bit. And as I said, I think maybe Jace Young against right-handed pitching and Kyron Paris as our third baseman against left-handed pitching might actually make a small degree of sense. So we are going to add Nash Wagner into the trade, and we are going to get her done on that one. Um, fans not happy that Swafford's gone, but as I talked about, Paris um, also has that captain personality and a better bat. So I like the trade. Thank you, Drellix. All right, it looks like I may get one more trade done here before the arbitration period. And this is one that I've just been grinding out uh, over the... Well, that would be an interesting pitcher for us to go after. Yeah, Danny Markle, the number 29 prospect in baseball. Guy who was picked in the 11th round in 2028. Yeah, I wouldn't mind bringing him on board the organization, but I'm guessing the price will be relatively high. Anyhow, back to what I was initially talking about. I have been grinding out a deal for the last several days, going back and forth with New York. And the main goal of this is to take Jay Sparofin, who was the first first-round draft pick ever of these Buffalo Wings back in one of our early episodes in the 2023 season. And he's been up with us at the major leagues uh, all five years in Buffalo. And he's actually been a divisional series MVP and a wild card series MVP. So he's been a big time player for us in the playoffs. But you can see the 111 WRC plus he put up in his first season was the best in his career. Since then, he's been a very average-ish major league hitter. And we had signed him to an extension. We paid him two and a half million this past year. But now he's on tap to make five to six million dollars each of the next four to five years, depending on whether we exercise that team option. And although I like him because there's a little bit of pop in his bat and he's pretty versatile defensively, can play either corner outfield position well, at $5 million a year for the five-ish years left he has on the contract, when we shopped him, nobody was willing to make an offer at all. So we started by being willing to retain 50% of his contract and we got an offer of Peyton Battenfield from the Yankees, who is a 33-year-old pitcher who um, looks like he's borderline useful. I don't love the personality. It's possible that we just wave and DFA him immediately upon completion of the deal. Like I said, I don't hate his arm, but I don't love his personality. But we've been adding in players <clears throat> to get the deal done, um, including Nick York, who we weren't going to make an offer to anyways. We we're going to move on from him. Jaquan Bethea is a former seventh-round draft pick. Um, he's only gotten as high as high A ball. I uh, just don't think he's going to have the stuff or the control to ever be much of a major leaguer. David Rivera is a minor league pitcher who hasn't gotten out of rookie ball. If he fully develops, he could be a useful-ish arm in the bullpen. He is a 20-year-old who throws in the mid to high 90s, so there's definitely some potential here. 
But again, I had to pay up to get out of that Barofen contract without retaining anything. And the one that actually hurts a little bit is including 24-year-old outfielder Lang Choi. Honestly, with us moving on potentially from Barofen, Choi is a guy who would have been in line for a lot more playing time. I definitely don't love giving up on him. But I feel that in our organization, even if we let him go, among younger guys who could come up and presumably join Featherston, who's going to be playing in center, and then once he's healthy again, presumably Vance Honeycutt will be our starting left fielder. Um, we've got Josh Springer in the minors, 24-year-old. Um, he can actually also catch with his... 50 50 catcher ratings he could conceivably be our backup catcher next year but he's a guy who could play first base or corner outfield for us um we've got rafael radio who we picked in the rule five draft a year ago not as good defensively but a potentially interesting ish bat and then we've also got vaughn necker who could play, again, a corner outfield spot for us. Not a great corner outfield, but he could. He came up at the end of last year. He doesn't really have anything left to prove in AAA. So he'd be fighting for a fourth outfield spot or potentially even an opportunity to maybe compete for some time in right field. And it could also open up some playing time for Tanner Shalat. Now, I don't think any of these guys are as good defensively as either Barofen or Lang Choi. But they're all cheaper. Um, I'm going to try to take Choi out of the deal one final time and just see what could get it done. But the options haven't been great. It feels like Choi is pretty critical to getting the deal done. Um, so I may just have to suck it up and let, let him go. Um, I don't love including him because I think he is defensively the best outfielder out of that crew that I just mentioned. And his bat is fine. I mean, I wish he would walk more, but as a fourth outfielder um he's got a chance of helping us and then i also need to keep in mind with the money that we're taking off from barofin and york and some of these other guys we're going to have materially more than this 12.7 million left when free agency does begin again obviously we are going to want to bolster scouting and player development further but we could have the opportunity to add a veteran bat for the outfield in free agency or pick up someone in trading in, in, um, in a trade either also. So I uh, don't love giving up Choi if I have to, but if, um, if I have to include him to get Barofen off the books, I think I will. Even if we're willing to eat 20% of Barofen's contract, we'd have to put in Tim Hull, Dansby Swanson, Takao Ota, Jorge Carrillo, or Samuel Basalo. So I think Choi is the most disposable of that crew. Um, so from that perspective, um, as I said, I think we're going to have money where if there's a veteran bat that we need to play a corner outfield spot, because we prefer that over some of the young guys I mentioned, we should have the money and opportunity to do that in spring training. There's also the trade market. There's also the Rule 5 draft. I think the important thing in terms of opening up some more financial flexibility for this team for this year and for several years to come is to get that $5 million plus that we owe Barofen off of our books. Um, He's a popular player, so the fans won't be happy. Obviously, he's been with us since the beginning of this playthrough, but I have to be realistic about what he is at this point, and I don't think he's a five, five and a half, six million dollar player. Um, 
even though I do feel like we're potentially hurting our defense in right field a bit by moving on from him. I think it's the right thing as we try to um, clear up a little more salary with this team. So we are going to go ahead and complete the deal. Fans not happy that Barofen is gone, but they are happy to have Batten Field on board. Still have 100 fan interest, and you can see that uh, with York and Barofen officially off the books now, um, more and more money continues to open up for us for uh, use as free agency approaches. And it appears that the Silver Sluggers for Adley Rutschman and Samuel Basala were the only hardware won by anyone in Buffalo this year. Uh, no votes for any of our rookies uh, for Rookie of the Year. Not that I was expecting that. Uh, AL Cy Young Award goes to Spencer Strider, who was 16-8 and eight with a 307 ERA and 271 strikeouts for the Brewers, unanimous, or not unanimous winner, there's 32 votes now, not 30. Uh, Pierce George of St. Louis, also a winner with 30 votes for first place, 16 and seven, 293 ERA, 286 strikeouts. Uh, Otani finished fifth in the voting for our Buffalo Wings. The American League uh, Most Valuable Player, Caleb Gideon Lore of the Twins, 282, 37 homers, 126 ribbies for the young outfielder. And the National League MVP, Ellie De La Cruz, one first place vote to Michael Harris that kept De La Cruz from being a Unanimous winner, uh, 318 average, 40 homers, and 98 ribbies for the veteran at this point. Third baseman uh, looks like our silver sluggers, Samuel Basalo and Adley Rutschman, did get some votes for National League MVP. But that is it for the Buffalo uh, award season. So now it's just a matter of simming a few days to the salary arbitration hearings, free agency. We'll see who's actually going to be on the market in free agency, uh, see what the international free agents look like, and also um, see what our money situation looks like when all is said and done. And we have finally, mercifully, some might say, made it to free agency. And you can see it looks like we have a lot of money available with the fact that we have now traded away our starting shortstop, Marcelo Meyer, traded away a pretty darn good relief pitcher in Cade Smith. We moved on from a couple of longtime outfielders, Nick York and Jace Barofen, who had both been playing pretty important roles on this team since our first season in Major League Baseball in 2026 and moved on from several other players through trade or not offering them arbitration. But that's freed up a decent amount of money, but we really don't have that much because we do want to make sure that our scouting and player development after all of the moves we've made are higher than they were a year ago, at the very least. So that takes us down to still having some money to play with, about $9 million this offseason. So feel like we have definitely right-sized our payroll a bit. Not perfect. Would love there to be a little more in the player development budget, but we're the highest we've been in a few years now. So that is progress. And we're going to take a look, uh, for those of you who are wondering, at the international amateur free agents who are available in our next episode. Uh, so it's going to be an episode that's totally about free agency with the international amateur free agents, as well as the actual major league free agents being the big focus in our next episode. The big um, free agents in the MLB, you can see the list here. We'll look at their 
ratings in a moment. But first, we'll check on the international free agents who are hitting the market. Take a quick look and see if there's anyone who interests us at all there. Ooh. First baseman, Yuji Horita. Bad personality. Awful defensively. Slow as a slug. But a potentially very interesting bat he's looking for 23.6 million dollars a year uh, we think that he's got a ton of potential um, we're going to request a scouting report on him um, i can't see us offering him 20 some odd million a year over five years but it would be good to know exactly who he is whoa nobuyuki iwai is a big time first baseman coming out of Japan. More experienced player who looks like he's probably been dominant over there, looking for close to 30 million a year. We'll scout him just to get to know him better, but uh, not going to be someone that we could possibly sign. Yoon Bun Kim, a 33 year old, doesn't look all that interesting. Jorge Flores, a 26-year-old second baseman out of Cuba. He actually looks kind of interesting. Um, awful arm. You know, he's a yeah, second baseman. Could play first. He's a utility infielder, but he's he's got a bat, potentially. Um, we'll request a scouting report on him. I think three, three and a half million is probably more than we want to pay for him given his mediocre defensive ratings with that poor arm and not so great double turn two rating. Um, center fielder Young Hoon Yu. Close to the Deshaun Seifu profile, although not quite the same contact, not quite the same speed. Very good defensively, though, like his durability. Um, I definitely would offer him a minor league contract, but that doesn't seem to be something that he's interested in right now. Um, he's interested in a minor league contract, which becomes a guaranteed contract if promoted. That... Is something that we should at least consider for a durable 23 year old center fielder who looks pretty solid defensively has some speed uh, never gonna walk much never gonna hit any home runs but um, if he gets the contact up decent gap power won't strike out could be a useful back of the roster type player so he is not entirely uninteresting to me but moving on to the major league free agents, um, as there always is a large crew of excellent relievers on the market here, certainly plenty of options. Um, Left-hand reliever is probably where we could use some help. Um, Thomas Zapucky looking for around $2 million would be a guy who could work for us, but that 35 movement um, combined with extreme fly ball tendencies sounds like a disaster waiting to happen and uh, gave up 30 home runs in 138 and two-thirds innings two years ago, 11 and 75 and a third innings this year. Thank you. Next. Our old buddy Garrett Crochet looking for five and a half million. Luke Fox, maybe ish. 1.7 million. Sam Henches looking for big money. Brandon Hughes not looking for real big money. Our old buddy Adrian Morehan looking for huge money. Maybe Brandon Hughes, the 34 year old lefty. Um, Definitely tougher on lefties than he is on righties. 
he's not looking for a ton of money. He could potentially work. And then Luke Fox, don't love that he's fragile. But again, he's not looking for a ton of money. A little better against lefties than he is against righties. Those guys could definitely both be in the mix as a left-handed arm to add to our bullpen in free agency. We don't really need a starting pitcher. We don't have the money for a top-end starting pitcher. And fortunately for us, it doesn't really look like there's any on the market this year. Um, Hunter Green, Pablo Lopez, and Dustin May all look in, in the $15 million range, not numbers that we could afford. Um, you know, maybe we go after for a second, a secondary type guy like a Cody Bolton to just be at the end of our bullpen, but I don't even think he would be that great a fit. Uh, take a look at the batters who are available. We already talked about EY from Japan. Looks like one of the top guys, Juan Soto, on the market at 32 years old. Obviously, just by the numbers these players are looking for, we are not going to be serious players for any of them. Uh, I need to hold on to the checkbook somewhat tightly this offseason after all of the uh, work we've already done to try to get the payroll a little bit more under control. Um, but we still intend to compete next year, so have some... Um, we have some holes to fill. One is potentially backup catcher if we wanted someone a little better defensively than potentially the rookie Springer or going with Gillette slash Basalo as our backup catchers like we did a year ago. Um, Will Banfield is a guy who was available in some of the trades that we've been looking at over the last... Um, several weeks of game time love him defensively but that bat is just brutal so that's why we never uh never really went after him in any trades rafael marchand is another pretty ugly bat decent defense you know if we could eventually get either of those guys on a minor league contract probably wouldn't hurt to bring them into the organization but doesn't seem like there is any obvious answer that we would be able to afford who would be a um, quality backup catcher for us if a uh, you know if one of these guys a Campusano, a Herrera a Reese McGuire if one of these veterans happened to be still on the market in three months we don't love Herrera's personality um you know, Campusano in particular, if he was on the market three months from now and was looking for $3 million, would not be a bad guy to bring on board as a backup catcher. I'm sure he's looking for a starting job right now, and he probably will find one. But we'll keep our eye on him. <clears throat> I've said I didn't think there were any interesting options at third base. And among guys that we can afford, you see, getting to people we can afford, we're down into the Jonathan Aranda range, who's not even as good a hitter as Jace Young and arguably is a worse defensive third baseman than a Jace Young. So that's part of the reason we hung on to him. You know, obviously we didn't know who exactly was going to be on the free agent market. But for the money we have to spend, I think we're better off with Jace Young than any of these guys. And then we'll take a look at the outfielders, because as I talked about with the departures of Choi and Barofin and York, we are definitely light in the outfield uh, for the first time in a while. But that is a position where oftentimes we can find someone who is going to linger on the free agent market for an extended period of time and ultimately maybe sign for significantly less money than they expected. Um, don't see any obvious guys here who are going to be around that long. Ariel Almonte, um, 
just at a very high level. Looks marginally interesting to me. A little bit of home run power, tiny bit of speed. Not horrible defensively. You know, could certainly play him in right. Would love the range in error to be higher. Obviously, you always want every rating to be higher. Um, Left-handed hitter. He's not much more than a replacement level bat, but um, if we needed a body, maybe. And then on the second page, you know, there's plenty of guys who are just guys that we could think about down the line. Trey Fletcher. 1.8 million. Has 42, 43, and 28 homers in AAA for the last few years. He was a guy that we had in Albany a while back. Hasn't gotten much of a shot at the major league level. Just that one... 39 at bat <clears throat> opportunity with Toronto the year before this one. And he hit just 205, did hit two homers. Um, a little better against left handed pitching than right handed pitching, but he's a guy with a little power. A little bit of uh, sneaky speed on the base paths, a little bit of range. I mean, honestly, when I think about moving on from Jace Barofin, um, Barofin's personality was a little better. He was a little better defensively, but Barofin didn't have the speed of Fletcher. I don't think he was quite as good overall in terms of his gap power, home run, eye combination. Obviously, I can look at Mr. Barofin and find that out um, rather than having to just try to remember these things. But yeah, his gap power was the same, but his home run power and his eye are both a little bit worse. Not as much speed, as I said. Cleaner personality, a little bit better defensively. But would I rather pay Trey Fletcher a million six, a million seven than paying Jace Barofin five million? I think so. So I think Trey Fletcher is a guy um, that could be in the mix for us if we decide we need a little bit more of a uh, veteran presence. He's 29 years old, so he's got the age of a veteran, but clearly doesn't have a ton of MLB experience at this point. Oscar Colas, another guy. Personality is the issue with him. Selfish. But respectable defensively, a little bit of a bat, an iron man, a guy who could be out there every day. So there are definitely guys in that one and a half to two million range that could potentially come in and join our team in a platoon role in a corner outfield spot for us. Um, so we've got a lot to think about um, if, as you guys have been seeing me pop through these screens and uh, talk if there's something that stood out to you as a guy that maybe we should go after given the limited financial wherewithal we will have please let me know um, we're not going to be huge players in free agency but hopefully we can uh, find a pitcher maybe find a backup catcher or an outfielder in free agency this year bolster our team a little bit rule five is going to be important and we'll continue trying to hit the trade market over the next few months also as we try to uh, reload and ensure that our buffalo wings are a playoff team for a fourth consecutive year in 2031 and we will find out what type of progress we're able to make in the free agent market and we'll also dig into the international amateur free agents in our next episode. Until then, thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.